Which bus should you take to travel New Zealand? Well, in this video, we're going to go through all the different options when it comes to traveling by bus in New Zealand. Plus, we'll give you our seven top tips for traveling New Zealand by bus coming up. What's up guys, we are Robin and Laura, the team behind BackpackerGuide.nz, helping you plan an epic backpacking trip in New Zealand. In this video, we're going to look at every single way you can travel by bus in New Zealand, as well as their pros and cons. That's including the national coach buses, tour buses, hop on hop off, and even local city buses and day tours. Plus, at the end of this video, we're going to give you seven top tips of traveling by bus in New Zealand. We post videos about New Zealand every single day. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And with that, let's get on with our ultimate guide to travel by bus in New Zealand. First up, let's talk about the national coach buses. The most extensive public transport network in New Zealand are the national coach buses. This is the mode of transport which will get you to the most places. And which companies run the national coach buses? The two main national coach bus companies are Intercity and Manabus. While Manabus connects towns and cities in the North Island, Intercity operates nationwide with the most destinations. And how does it work? With national coach buses, single trip tickets can be purchased, taking you from A to B. Bus passes can also be purchased, which is a great option if you plan to use Intercity on a regular basis. For example, Intercity does a bus pass called a Flexi Pass, which runs on a travel hour basis, and they have a pass called a Travel Pass, which is a bus pass for set rounds around the country, including a few activities. To find out more about those passes, check out the article that we linked up in the description below. And what is it like to travel by National Coach Bus? Using the National Coach Bus is easy. You can book your trip online with most travel agents and accommodation in New Zealand. Then, just show up at the required bus stop 15 minutes before departure time. The bus driver usually asks for your name and booking number or your bus pass detail. And then you hop in the bus. The bus trip usually involves a couple of 10 minutes refreshment break as well as a 30 minute lunch break. Bus driver give commentary on the speakers along the way and announce when approaching a stop. Just so you know when you need to get off the bus and you don't get lost. And what are the pros of travelling by National Coach? Alright, so the first pro is that it's the cheapest method to get around New Zealand. The second one is that it allows you for independent travel so you can plan your own trip and where you want to go. And the third one is that there are daily departures all over the country. And the cons of travelling by National Coach? It's not as social as other bus options and the bus doesn't make any stops for photos or short walk along the way. Alright, now let's talk about the backpacker tour buses. Another way to see New Zealand is with a bus tour. This is a guided route around the country with a group, a bus and a couple of tour guides. Bus tours come with a lot of inclusions such as accommodation, meals and some activities. Sounds pretty awesome! Which are the companies that run backpacker tour buses around New Zealand? The bus companies that run tours in New Zealand include Contiki, G Adventures, Hacker Tours, Stray Journeys, Top Deck, Wild Kiwi and Flying Kiwi. And what makes them backpacker tours is the fact that they mostly attract young travellers aged between 18 to 30 years old that are looking for an action-packed trip in New Zealand. So how does it work and what is it like to travel with a backpacker tour bus around New Zealand? With bus tours, you have a huge variety of tours to choose from, ranging from between 3 to 24 days. You pay for the whole trip before your chosen departure date, which often includes accommodation in a hostel or a tent in a campsite, and at least one meal a day and some activities. You also have the option to choose some activity add-ons or upgrade to a private room or private cabin, and provide some information on any di dietary requirements you might have. From there, you travel to New Zealand and usually the tour groups will have an introduction evening, giving you a chance to meet everyone the day before your tour. Otherwise, you turn up at the designated meeting place on the trip and away you go. 
You will also have a tour guide or two who will look after you for the whole trip. They will help organise your bookings for any additional activities you might want to do, plus make you aware of each day's itinerary. They usually prepare the meals or organise to make the meals together as a group and as all tour guides do, they also give commentary as you are travelling throughout the country. So what are the pros of travelling with a backpacker bus tour? Firstly, this is a stress-free way of travelling with everything planned for you. And secondly, it's a great way to meet new people. And third, it's action-packed, so you're either always on the move or always doing something. Is there any cons of travelling by backpacker bus tour around New Zealand? Why yes, Robin, there is. You have limited time to yourself and not much scope for independent travel. Plus, there's no flexibility. So that's the tour buses, but now let's talk about the hop-on hop-off buses. Like bus tours, hop-on hop-off buses follow a set route across the country with the option to hop off just about anywhere along the route. And like bus tours, accommodations, meals and activities are not included in the price, but are more run on a pay-as-you-go basis. And which companies are the hop-on hop-off buses? The two main hop-on hop-off buses that run very similar to each other are Kiwi Experience and Stray. Flying Kiwi also allows you the option to hop off their bus tours for 9 days. For this guide, we'll focus on hop and hop off as being straight and Kiwi experience. But check out the link in the description below on how Flying Kiwi works. So how does it work and what is it like to travel with a hop on hop off bus? Bus passes for chosen routes are booked and paid before departure. You can even buy a pass and decide your departure date later, as long as it's within 12 months of purchasing your pass. When you're ready, book your departure date and meet your bus at the given location and time. From your departure date, bus passes are valid for one year. For national routes, you are able to complete the route multiple times with a few conditions. You will meet your driver guide who is your driver, tour guide and travel agent where you will give your name and your passenger number to get onto the bus. Throughout each day that you travel with the bus, as opposed as the days where you are exploring a city on your own, there will be plenty of refreshment stops, short walk, photo stops, supermarket stops and much more. Clipboards will go around the bus to sign up to accommodation choices and activity choices, if any. Accommodations are usually hostels with communal kitchens and lounge facilities. You pay for your accommodations and activities on arrival. Because meals are not included, you have the choice to eat out, if available, or cook in the hostel kitchen with the food that you will have purchased during the supermarket stop on that day. If there is anything we've missed in this explanation, it will probably be in the article called How does the hop on hop of buses work? And the link is in the description below. Moving on to the pros of travelling with the hop on hop off buses. You basically get the best of both worlds, stress-free bus style travel and you have the choice to be independent by hopping off the bus and choosing your own activities and choosing your own accommodation. It's also a great way to meet new people and they are kind of action-packed tour while you have the option to slow down by hopping off the bus. And the cons of travelling with the hop on hop off buses? Uh, it can be quite expensive throughout paying as you go. You need to be quite strict on yourself on what activities to be involved in if you are on a tight budget. Also, the term and conditions of traveling can be a little cloudy and some locations you can't hop off as well as some very tight rules on the unlimited travel stuff. And finally, it can be hard to book yourself back onto the bus during the busy summer months without having, without having to wait for a little while. Now we'll just quickly go over the other buses in New Zealand, starting with the local city buses. New Zealand's the larger city have their own bus network to connect with the suburbs and the city centre. Check out some of our public transport articles on backpackerguide.nz, we'll put a few links for the major city in the description below for you guys. City buses provide a cheap way to get around the city. You pay for one-way tickets which are usually priced on how many zones you're passing through. 
For those of you which are going to be staying in cities for a while, perhaps working on a working holiday visa, then you might want to consider getting yourself a bus pass or bus card. It gives you a bit of a discounted fare. There is the AT Hop card in Auckland, there is the Snapper card in Wellington, there is the Metro card in Christchurch, and there is Connector Bus for Queenstown. There is obviously a few more, but that's the main ones. And for day bus trips? Some tours in New Zealand involve taking a tour by bus and they are usually the, uh, tours that involve activity and even food. The most popular day tour by bus are trip from Queenstown to Milford Sound and from Bahia to Cape Ringa, which is the top of New Zealand. These tours are booked as activities rather than mode of transport and for more information on booking activities, see the link in the description below on how to book activities in New Zealand. So that's all the ways you can travel by bus in New Zealand, but as promised, here are the seven top tips for traveling New Zealand by bus. All right, number one, if choosing a hop on hop of bus, book your pass in the low season, that's from April to August, and you're gonna get the lowest price. Remember, your bus pass can be activated within a year. And number two, ask the driver which is the best side of the bus to sit on for the views. Number three, pack some snacks so you can offer them around. That's a killer icebreaker. And four, pack lunch. For trips that don't have lunch included, this will help you save a killing on buying cabinet food in cafes and bakeries. Number five, don't sit near the toilet. They get stinky after a long trip. Six, pack a layer with you on the bus when the air conditioning gets too cold. And number seven, Buses are never on time in New Zealand, but still, don't be late because they will leave you behind the one time they are. That goes for lunch stops and the coach buses too. So that's it for our ultimate guide to travelling by bus in New Zealand. We hope you found this guide super useful and if you do have any more questions or any suggestions about what our next video should be, then be sure to stick them in the comments below. And if you want to get more travel tips for New Zealand, as well as get bucket list inspiration from our epic travel vlog where we're tackling 365 days in New Zealand and 365 activities, consider subscribing. Until next time, travel safe.